Hello everyone, it's Mandy here, and I'm just showing you all of the supplies I'm using. I'm using my Archer and Olive sketchbook. I'm using my Jin Hao 82 in an extra fine fountain pen, a Uni Kirotoga pencil with color Eno lead in it. It's the light blue. And then I'm also using Diamine Earl Grey. Earl Grey is just this beautiful dark gray ink that is moody and in some ways it's got so many different color facets. I'm quite obsessed with it. So that's one I have a full bottle of and the like giant bottle, not just the small bottle. And it's a very fairly affordable ink. That giant bottle is $18, I believe. And it's one that is huge and it's going to last forever. It is filled in at least three of my pens at all times. So that one is one that I highly recommend. But this is my last spread in the sketchbook and I have been finished with it for about two weeks now. I'm having the hardest time figuring out what my next sketchbook is going to be. So I love this sketchbook, but I also get very emotionally connected to my sketchbooks. And I don't know if anybody else out there is that same way, but I, for some reason, especially because of this one, I don't feel like I can decorate the outside with stickers since it's already decaled and just absolutely beautiful with the edges and everything. I don't feel like I can just decal it with stickers to give me that emotional connection of, ah, this is that sketchbook for that time of my life, especially because I feel like a lot of my sketchbooks are archival to my life that it's really hard for me to pick the same sketchbook. So I was really excited about this sketchbook because they had another cover when it came out and they said, these are going to be in stock. And then when they restocked them, the other color way or the other storybook cover, they only came out with dot grid. And, and then on their website, it's all gone in any of the other paper options. So I can't get Blake paper in it. I'm really disappointed because why tell your customers that you're going to continue to stock these so you don't have to fear that they're gonna be gone only to take away one of the options. So I'm a little frustrated, but I mean, it's probably a business move. I don't understand what running a business is like. I just know that it was the sketchbook that I really liked. I went from unsure about this sketchbook to just loving it. I don't know how to explain it because I think that finding the sketchbooks that work for you is such a personal process. It's part of the emotions for me. It's part of growing as an artist for me has been experimenting with different sketchbooks. And don't get me wrong, I'm still experimenting, but I am on a mission to find another sketchbook company that makes sketchbooks with papers like this. Cause it's 160 grams, it's white. It is, it was, I think, 80 pages, full pages, but 160 if you use both sides, which I do. So it took me about four and a half, five months to fill this sketchbook. And usually I'm only in a sketchbook for one, maybe two months at the most. So this one just lasted longer. And I feel like I grew so much as an artist in it that it was, it's was. it been one of those kind of things where it's like, this is frustrating. But at the same time, it's okay. Like it's one of those things where as an artist, you're going to be okay. Like you're going to figure this out. You're going to go back to your other, you know, talent sketchbooks and figure this out. Or you're going to find another company that makes sketchbooks. And I have been doing a lot of drawing in my Archer and Olive dot grid journals because I have been journaling and drawing and I'm doing an RPG as you can see in one of my other videos. So it's not like I'm not using my dot grids, but for an everyday sketchbook, I don't want the grids, or at least I don't think I do. And maybe I should pull out one of my mini inventorial Archer and Olive journals with the dot grids and see if I could do a sketchbook with it. That would be an interesting experiment. 
and it might be one of those sketchbooks that never is completed, but who knows? Anyway, this is my process. As you can see, I've been doing this like coming up with these fine lines and then going back and then adding in my hashed hashes and my cross hatches in different places after I do just one thin line. I have gotten really good at keeping my hands steady to make these nice lines. I know that not everybody can do it. You just have to find the process that works for you. That's what this is all about, is finding the process that works for you. I'm a creature of habit is what I've discovered about myself. I always thought I was this creature of spontaneity and sometimes I like to be spontaneous, but I am very particular about things I like. And it's it's this weird thing with neurodivergencies. It's just accepting that you have these tendencies that not everybody might have. I am currently in like week six of loving toast toasted on the in a pan sourdough bread toasted in a pan with cottage cheese on top and that is one of those things where i'm gonna eat that to death i could probably eat it for every meal and one of these days i'm gonna look at it and say never again because that's part of being neurodivergent it's the same thing i crave the same thing i get obsessed with things i over obsess so i I'm obsessing about the sketchbook thing, which means I have bought, we're not going to talk about how many sketchbooks I have bought. We're not going to talk about how many sketchbooks I have bought since this one in search of finding the perfect next sketchbook. And I don't think it's out there. It's one of those things where I don't think there is a perfect sketchbook because be, to be quite honest, this sketchbook also isn't perfect. There are things that I didn't like about it, especially like how it handled um, colored pencil. I mean, it handled colored pencil just fine, but I also like a little bit of tooth on the paper for a colored pencil, which <laughs> doesn't work well with fountain pens. So it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, well, I like this stuff. I like experimenting with mediums, but not every kind of paper is good for every kind of medium. So it's really hard as someone who likes to play with different things to have just one sketchbook. But it's also really hard for me to have five sketchbooks because if I have five sketchbooks, then I'm going to forget which sketchbook it is and then I'm going to get overwhelmed and then what am I doing with my life? Yep, that's, that's how it feels. Anyway, this is a little bit of inside of my brain and I don't know if this is just my brain or if there's other people out there that feel this way about these kind of things. I think I'm just weird sometimes. I don't know. But, and that's how I'm feeling that's what I'm going through right now is this whole sketchbook slump. <laughs> I am laughing at myself because I think about when you have a book that is so good, there is this thing called in the book world, a book hangover. So I have also been in a book hangover because I read what was it that I even read? Oh my goodness. I can't even think of what I read that I loved so much anymore because I have been in pursuit of finding another really good book. Oh, there we go. I remember now. But it was it was a book about a girl who fell in love with a serial killer or she was a serial killer and then she fell in love with her mark and I just I don't know why I loved it so much, but I did. And I think also I'm just weird. Anyway, I digress. So this book hangover thing is you are so wrapped up in this book that now you're trying to fill those feelings with another book. But guess what? All those other books aren't going to fill your same feelings because that was one special time. And so maybe I need to think about it this way too, that this sketchbook right here was perfect for the time that I needed it. And that it's okay to move on. 
I don't know. I'm trying to convince myself that it's okay because I can't access another one, that it's okay to find another one. But I'm so loyal, and it's, it's funny, I don't even know why I'm loyal to Archer and Olive. I just really love their products. I'm not even like an ambassador or anything. It's just that it's kind of the ones, kind of the book that I like, or book, kind of the sketchbook that I like. And I don't know. I can't explain it. This one just has my heart and I'm going to hug it quite often. I have flipped through it quite a few times. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Sometimes it's, it's one of those things where I don't know, but I do know that I'm really loving working with my fountain pens and this whole fountain pen looking ink drawings. And what's really funny to me is that years ago, so I have now been drawing every day. I, I even now, even though I can't find a sketchbook, I still draw every single day. I've been drawing every single day for about almost four years now, three years. And I started with Inktober. So the fact that I am finding my groove with ink just brings my heart joy because I really enjoy ink. And I just honestly don't really know where my love of ink came from, but it's here. And I, I think I just love the look that you can get with such a simple little line and it's not just you know colors and shapes but you can get you can get shapes and like different shades with your ink there are so many different ways that you can use inks especially because I've been finding that it's really quite entertaining for me to be like oh it doesn't just have to be black now this one is gray and it comes off, at least in my video, it comes off quite black-ish. And I'm sorry for the fade in and fade out there of the camera. I don't know how to fix that setting. Somebody mentioned it on another video of mine. This is just a random tangent. Somebody mentioned on another video of mine that it would do that. And so I still need to play with my camera settings and figure that out. So I apologize for that when it comes up because I am aware of it. I am still figuring out cameras. I don't know if I'm ever going to actually figure out how to do them correctly, but I am still working on that. However, back to ink, it's just one of those things where it's also, I have been trying to be a little bit more simplistic in my packing choices when it comes to like packing to go for a trip or packing to even just go to my mom's house for supper. I always will have a sketchbook with me, especially because I get overstimulated very easily in a lot of situations. I have an extreme anxiety and it's one of those things that I developed as an adult. So I have worked really hard to find the right coping mechanisms. And so one of the things that I have found is that if I sit and sketch or draw or write while I'm in uncomfortable overstimulation situations, and I shouldn't say even uncomfortable because hanging out with my family isn't uncomfortable, but there are so much noise going on on that my brain just kind of fries and then I get anxious and instead of snapping at people, I would much rather draw. I feel like that's a much nicer thing to do for the people in your life that are important to you. Instead of snapping at them, do something productive and pretty that people like. And so I usually will have some sort of activity with me. If it's not my sketchbook, it's my journal, if it's not my journal, it's my crochet, it's something creative that I can do with my hands. And people seem to sometimes have issues with it, but I also have kind of gotten to the point, I'm in my mid thirties. If you don't like it, that's on you. It's not on me. 
would you rather me not be there at all? Because that would probably be the next thing. It's one of those things. I mean, maybe, maybe not everybody is okay with that, but that's kind of one of those things that as you grow older, or maybe even if you grow even younger, I don't know. This is just my thought process, and this is what's happened in my life, is that I have had so many experiences that I have learned what works for me. And it takes time to figure that out. And sketching, sketching is one of those things. And so I hope that if you are somebody who gets overstimulated, where you just want to shut down and the noise is just getting to your brain and you're losing it, try sketching. Try it. And if you're watching this video, I probably imagine that sketching and drawing is an outlet for you because I don't know why you would click on a drawing video if you're just like, Meh, I'm into rugby, but I'm going to watch the drawing video. Actually, that'd be really cool. But just the point is, is I feel like if you're clicking on this on YouTube, you're probably into drawing and you like to watch other people draw. Well, here's how I started. I started this just because I love drawing, I do. And I wanted to be an animator when I was a kid and then life kind of changed. I mean, I even went to school for a while for animation, but life changed, my plans changed. I have a degree in English. I'm sure I've mentioned this on my channel before because you know I do have book content as well. But I wanted at one point to make my career art and now, it is such an important part of my everyday life to maintain my mental sanity that I don't know if I can. See, I am in this weird boat. I wanted some kind of crazy things when I was a kid. I wanted to be an artist, a singer, and a beanie baby clothes maker. I don't know if anybody remembers the Beanie Babies and how big they were back when they first came out. They, the Beanie Babies were the thing. And I loved my Beanie Babies and I spent so much time sewing and knitting and crocheting for them that they had little wardrobes. So fun fact too is that I played with Barbies and was obsessed with them growing up. So when I first got married, I knew that we wanted kids and I decided to try out since I had nothing else going on and no prospects for jobs because it was a really hard time to get a job at that point in my city that I decided to open up my own business. And so I made a business on Etsy making doll clothing for all sorts of dolls, Barbies, American Girl, all that kind of stuff. And I did that for almost seven years. And so I went from, you know, I was marketing and English and all that. I went from doing jobs outside of the home to running my own business. And it was an art business and it was my dream. And back in January of 2023, I crashed and burned out hard, like super burnout. And so I, at that point was like, okay, I want to do anything to get out of this. Like I was desperate. So I thought maybe if I took some time, I could illustrate my children's book and then switch to illustration. And I do still want to work on my children's book. I have plans for that, but I never want art and drawing to be my full-time job. I cannot do that to myself. And I commend anybody who can do it and not experience the burnout I did. I have so much respect for them. Just so much respect because that is not my experience with something else that I absolutely loved. And it's very hard for me now to sit down and sew because I, I burnt out. And I didn't burn out because it wasn't working. The problem was is that I was successful. I didn't fail at my business. I mean, I wasn't really great at inventory management. I wasn't really great at money management, like that kind of stuff, because that was more my husband was like, hey, here's what you need to do. I'm totally a creative in the process, but it was just, it ate my whole life. 
and I don't want my art to eat my whole life. I mean, in the same way, because I could sit and draw all day and I do, but then I have days where I don't draw at all. And that is because I have the freedom. And actually, I don't think there's many days that I don't draw, but I don't sit and do it all day. Like I, I do get something creative out of my head every day. But it's like one of those days if I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't fill an entire sketchbook spread. And I really just enjoy the sketchbook process. And the whole point of me creating this YouTube is that you can create quality artwork. You can get better. You can have sketchbooks that, I mean, I think this is pretty great. I really, I'm really proud of my, my work and my artwork. And I am just blown away myself by what I come up with now. But that's because I really focused on it and put the hard work in to get better at art. And I have so many more ways that I can improve. However, I do it for me. I get the fancy sketchbooks because they're mine. They're for me. And if I can tell anyone and if someone on my YouTube clicks it, and says, oh man, I wish I could draw like that. Do it. You can. Because here's how I did it. I sketched every day for multiple years. I took classes. I did crazy things like um, any class I could take that I was interested in online. I did domestica courses. I did class 101 courses. I did um, some more expensive courses because I do want to create a children's book. I took one with Beatrice Blue which I am just very, very grateful for. She is such an inspiration. So, I mean, I've taken some really hardcore classes, but it is for me. It is for me. I have my job. I am a teacher. And so it's like one of those things where I don't have to rely on this. And that was where my business failed for me is I had to rely on that income. And if my sales went down, you know, they would tank for a month because that is the ebb and flow of sales. I would be so stressed. And then I would be constantly thinking about, okay, something has to make money. This has to profit. This has to do this where it's not that way anymore. And I feel like you can see that in my work. My work just, at least for me, is joyful and happy or fun and it's all the things that are in my mind or the things that I see or the things that are happening around me but it's not the same kind of thing that my business was and so I mean I think my biggest advice for anybody who wants to go into the thing they love for work is to have other hobbies for one and separate your work life balance. You have to have a balance. And then people are like, well, it doesn't exist. Well, it has to. It has to. You have to have separate spaces. So I had specific hours. I had to set my hours and I had to do this certain thing where I would shut my my office door at night and I wouldn't go into my office for fun because if I went into my office for fun then I felt like I was working and all my work was around me and so I think that for me being able to leave the home to do my job has been really helpful and this is not to say that there aren't other people that can do it because obviously people run their own businesses this is just for me and this was my experience with it is that I struggled with it and there's nothing wrong with knowing that, but I have also found the job that I absolutely love and that was a process and it took a long time to figure that out. And I cannot explain to you the joy that I feel when I build relationships with my students and when I get to see them understand something and have that aha moment of, oh, I get this problem. Oh, I get that. Or they connect something. And it's something that is really hard for me to explain, but that's it's, it's a joy. And there's not enough 
in, in, in my in in my observation, there's not enough teachers out there that have this joy. And there's a lot of things and a lot of hard that can take that joy from you. But at this point, I I just that's one of those things. There's so many hard days when it comes to being a teacher, and I'm glad that I get summers to just do my art and do my fun, and then it's gonna hit the ground running in the fall. But I I love it. And it's one of those things where my hobbies, I still love. I still have this deep, deep passion for art. And I feel like in so many ways that, and maybe this is a social media thing too, in so many ways we are told that it's all or nothing. You know, you're not an artist unless you're making money off of your art. You're not an artist if you're just filling sketchbooks. You're not an artist if this. And I just want to throw that against the wall. Like, you can be an artist and be a scientist. You can be an artist and be an, I don't know, an instrumentalist. You can be an artist and be anything else. Like, you don't have to just have one little role that you fill you can be both and that's the beauty of what I have discovered with my sketchbook processes is <laughs> they're fun and it doesn't have to be anything serious but I also am serious about getting better because I enjoy it and it's a challenge and it's a challenge that I feel like even when I've like perfected my style, it's going to change and there's going to be something else. Like I'm going to see an artist who did this flower the exact specific way and I'm going to want to do it just like them. And I'm going to want to figure out how to do it. I'm going to want to figure out how to make watercolor work the way that I want it to work. Or I'm going to have to figure out how to work the way that watercolor wants me to work, which is that I don't have control at all because watercolor will do what it wants <laughs> and there's something just beautiful in that I don't know it's this is a lot of what goes through my head a lot of this is just me stream of consciousness talking to you and who knows if any of this makes any sense to you I have jumped topics quite a bit already we went from discovering talking about sketchbooks to what else I don't know and then my burnout and it's one of those things that I've had to get comfortable with talking about is being burned out yeah I was super burned out yeah it was hard I didn't know if I was going to be able to do anything after my burnout and it's it is just one of those emotionally draining things and so I haven't been running a business now for almost two years and it just feels so much better. I just feel for me that I can be more present as a mom and being a mom is like the most important thing to me. It, of all my little pieces and identities, I wanted to be a mom so much and I have utmost respect for people who don't want to be a parent. I have a lot of friends who are either kidless and animalless or are like the coolest dog parents ever. So like I don't I don't have a problem with whatever people decide to do. It's just for me I always wanted to be a mom and I have these two amazing children that I want to be present for. I've noticed that when we have our days and we ask them, "Hey, what was your favorite part of today?" If we've done something with them, no matter what it is, like the activity, if we've done something with them, that's their favorite. And when I was running my business, that was the biggest thing is that I was constantly, and I'm, I'm going to tear up here talking about this. Like you can't see my tears, obviously, because you can see my sketchbook, but I'm tearing up. I never felt like I could be present with my children and with my family my phone was always on and i was always checking it because there might be a message and if you didn't message that customer back within you know sometimes even five minutes they could take cases out on you and i was always in 
fear, like just an anxiety and fear of my business shutting down or something happening. I had so many of my designs stolen from companies. So it's, it's, it's hard. And so I get a little bit a little bit emotional about the fact that for years I couldn't be present in anything because I always had my mind focused on that. And so that's been my, that's been one of the things that I've been so grateful for is making this a hobby. Even YouTube is kind of a hobby. I like to share because I think sharing these videos has been a really fun outlet for me to share my process. And I know that I'm really inspired by other people's process and how they do their work. And so I just I kind of want to give back to that. I've always wanted to like be part of a community. Being part of communities is really important to me and being involved in the processes of that. So yeah, that's what's been on my mind lately is just trying to kind of figure out where I belong and how I fit and how the world fits. And I think that, that it changes and yeah. So anyway, that's a lot of this. So these three people that I drew in this spread, I didn't mention before, they were found on Pinterest. One is the one, the first one on the other page is Nicola Coughlin from Bridgerton. I am obsessed with drawing her. She is just, oh, I just love her proportions. They are so much fun to draw. Her face is just fun. So I've been drawing her a lot lately in many of her Penelope forms, um, especially because this was her season. But these other two were just fashions that I really liked. And so I just sketched them out in my sketchbook. And I really love how they all came out. So from this point, there's about five minutes left in my video. I am going to fade out and let you just watch the rest of the process with the music. And I really appreciate you being here. I don't know if any of this made sense to you or if you enjoyed the video or if you enjoyed my ramblings. Let me know. Let me know where you've come in your art process or if you've been burned out or anything. I'd love to have just a chat down in the comments. Go ahead and leave one and I will try my best to respond in a timely manner. And if you like this video, please hit like and if you want to see more of this content, subscribe, because that does really absolutely help my channel reach the people that it should. And you have a great day. Pull out your sketchbook and get to sketching. And that's that. Bye, guys.